Thank you, Madam Chair, and thanks to all of you for being here today. Um, I'm increasingly worried about uh, the politicization of infrastructure projects. The, what we're seeing is, is a loud, increasingly vocal anti-development environmental movement that has set its sights on run-of-the-mill pipeline infrastructure projects. Uh, so th this does not represent everyone in the United States. It doesn't represent even most who are concerned about the environment. Uh, it's a fringe movement, um, but it's a fringe movement not to be ignored. It recently killed the Northeast Energy Direct Pipeline and the Constitution Pipeline, which would have supplied natural gas to a number of states uh, uh, on the East Coast. Um, now, Utah is, is one of the fastest growing states in the country. Our population is expected to double by 2050. There aren't a lot of states that can claim that particular distinction. I'm genuinely worried that the endless litigation that we're seeing and the political pressure campaigns that we're seeing <coughs> uh, waged by anti-development um, uh, fringe activists will inhibit Utah's growth by preventing the construction of necessary pipeline infrastructure. With that, without that and other types of, of infrastructure, you cannot have growth, growth that Utah would otherwise be experiencing. So, um, Mr. Eisenberg, I, I'd like to know, how, how can Utah grow if we can't reliably heat and um, uh, provide heat and reliable le electricity for our residents, uh, particularly for our new residents moving into the state? Well, and I, and I would add the manufacturing sector as well, right? I mean, we, we are the foundation of communities and, and we need the energy as well. Um, I mean, we all kind of get what's going on here. I mean, there, there's a group of people right now meeting in Atlanta to try to figure out how to make this process more difficult, the, the pipeline siting process and permitting process more difficult. That's not gonna change. Um, there are, it, it, this is just the, the world we live in. Um, it's unfortunate because the FERC process that generally through through laws, through Energy Policy Act of 05 and, and 07, has gotten some, some, some remedies that will allow it to move a little bit quicker than some of the other big infrastructure projects, but it's two steps forward and one step back, and now we're, we're dealing with some of, some of these challenges that, that, that some of the folks in the industry are saying are adding years to, to, the, to the project. Um, we just wanna see them get done, right? We have, we have a real, we have a math problem. We need, we're gonna need a lot more energy for power sector and for, for, for uh, in, industry uh, in Utah and elsewhere over the next decade we just need the pipes in place. You can regulate them, do whatever you need to do, but let's get them built so that we don't have a real log jam for us, um, because otherwise you don't have manufacturing. No, that's right. So in addition to that, we have government regulations like the Clean Power Plan and MATS that are forcing a transition away from coal-fired um, um, uh, electric power generation to natural gas. Now, the same groups that force the transition to natural gas are now successfully scuttling the chief way to transport natural gas, which is by pipeline. In other words, w without pipeline infrastructure, you cannot rely on natural gas uh, as a way to generate electricity. And Mr. Eisenberg, I'm, I'm at a loss over this one. Uh, um, we, are, we are as well. I mean, manufacturers need baseload generation. For, we need power, right? And that generally comes from fossil fuels or nuclear power. Um, and, and obviously there are other things taking up an increasing portion of the grid, but that's it. That's where you get your baseload power from. We're losing our nuclear power plants. We're losing our coal-fired power plants. And now we're having this existential discussion about whether or not we, we need natural gas. We need natural gas in the, in, in the manufacturing sector. We don't have much left after that uh, to keep us going. And if we don't have it, we've got a real problem. And this problem is particularly in, acute in states like mine where the majority of the land is owned by the federal government. Uh, other people in other parts of the country are dealing with a lot of uh, uh, regulatory hurdles, but those hurdles are magnified. They are compounded uh, to a very significant degree in a public land state like mine. Um, in Utah, business looking to build a pipeline should expect to have to deal with some combination of the Advisory Council on Historic Preservation, the Bureau of Indian Affairs, Bureau of Land Management, Army Corps of Engineers, uh, in addition to the EPA, the Fish and Wildlife Service, the Forest Service, and the Federal um, um, Energy Regulatory Commission. Mr. Black, could you walk me through what a permitting process in the West looks like and, and how could this process be improved, particularly within public land states like mine? 
Well, thank you, Senator. You're right. There's a lot of agencies that we need to work with, and we're ready to do that, but we hope we can do that uh, in a timely <clears throat> manner. Uh, pipelines are subject to many of the same requirements as other federal agency actions in the West, such as a NEPA review or a permitting to cross federal lands, like you said. In practice, a pipeline has a minimal impact on the environment. A recent, recent NEPA review of a large pipeline project found that the alternative would have less impact that the pipeline alternative would have less impact on the environment than all alternatives, including no action. That's because the energy demanded by the public will reach market by some other mode, by truck, train, pipeline, barge, maybe not barge in Utah. And pipelines have the least environmental impact. Uh, the federal workers at local offices in the West are, as we understand, generally working hard to complete that review work. Uh, we see permit reviews slow down when maybe Washington outside forces get involved and, uh, or when pipeline or when local field offices don't have the resources to, uh, to process those applications. One recommendation is just to make sure those local field offices have enough resources and enough leeway to make the decisions that we need to be made to get those pipelines sited in Utah and elsewhere in the West. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Madam Chair.